Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sean of Third Rail Fine. Hope you're having a beautiful day today. Right now, we have an update on the Nashville school shooter Audrey Hale manifesto thing. Before we do that, I just want to say I had my 40th birthday. It was a good time. I had a birthday stream Saturday night off the rails. It actually fell exactly on my birthday, and I assembled. Uh, a streaming autist version of the Avengers and probably one of the best, funniest, uh, just greatest streams I've ever done. You can find that on Rumble. All of my videos are on Rumble and uh, there's going to be more of me on Rumble than there is on YouTube because I can't actually cover a lot of stories. I can't cover the normal things I want to do on YouTube. They deem it harmful. I can't talk about teachers diddling their students anymore because it's harmful. Harmful to who, really? Anyways, here, I've got my Star Wars blanket because the leopard print is too much for a lot of you. But also, I have my little friend at uh, birthday party. So, the Nashville shooter, Audrey Hale, gets to keep all of her secrets hidden. I just, I can't, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Manifesto cannot be released. No, so a lot has been leaked. There's still a whole lot more to go, but a lot has been leaked. The rest has to stay locked away because of copyright. That's right. You, you heard me correctly. Copyright. Nashville school shooter Audrey Hale's manifesto cannot be released because victims' families have the copyright. That's crazy. That's wild. That doesn't make any sense. That seems like that's setting up important precedent for the future in an attempt to uh, kneecap transparency. What do I know? A lengthy manifesto written by Nashville shooter Audrey Hale won't be released to the public because its copyright now belongs to her victim's loved ones, a judge has ruled. So this might put the whole copy or the, the manifesto to bed. We're never going to see it. This is that ruling. We are never going to see it unless the, the entirety of it leaks. Again, we've seen a lot of it. But that just might be it. This might be over now. Families of the three children and three staffers gunned down last year by Hale, 28, at the private Christian Covenant School can block media outlets' access to the writings. Chancery Court Judge Lashia Miles uh, ruled Thursday night. The original writings, journals, art, Photos and videos created by Hale are subject to an exception to the Tennessee Public Records Act created by the Federal Copyright Act, Miles wrote in court document. Now, only if there were exceptions to copyright. You know, fair use, we might have to fair use that thing if any more leaks happen. The ruling comes after Hale's parents transferred ownership of her writings, which include 20 journals, a memoir, a self-deletion note to the families of the people she ended in a bid to keep them out of the public eye. So the family, the Hale family, and the victim's families colluded together to keep all of this stuff out of the... Why? Why would the victims want that? We saw what happened. This, this girl, because she was a girl, had autism, so she had a very weak sense of self. I know all about it. My wife is autistic. My kids are autistic. I'm drowning in autism every day. I understand it thoroughly. A very weak sense of self. So she was plucked like a low-hanging fruit by an ideology in her schools, her social media, her friends, and it started to twist her inside out into knots. And she had medication. Medication that made her do and think things. But also medication that also made her do and think things. 
but each medication made the other medication have stronger side effects. This poor girl didn't stand a chance. The victims, loved ones, then argued in court that they should be allowed to determine who has access to Hale's musings, which news outlets and other groups believe will offer clues into her disturbing motive. I don't know why the families would want to hold this back. I know if, without a shadow of a doubt, if anything like that happened to me, I would want every single, and I don't care what what FBI agent, RCMP agent, uh, uh, CSIS, or whoever said to me, I, I wouldn't care. I would want every single man, woman, and child to read about the thing that twisted whatever person up that killed my loved ones. I would want everybody to know. I wouldn't want some cloak and dagger fly-by-night scheme to keep it all a mystery. Interest in Hale's writings stem from the assertion by police that she was assigned female at birth but may have identified as a transgender man. And from the writings that we have seen, that is 100% true. It's Audrey Hale is her actual name. Aiden Hale is what she likes to go by. She was out of her goddamn mind. Absolutely out of her goddamn mind. She had all kinds of psychiatrists like psychiatry doctors and and all the all the medication for it out of her mind. One of the things that that drove Hale crazy is she wasn't good at her job. She was what like a designer or whatever, and she was bad at it. She had a hard time getting work at the thing she liked to do because she wasn't good at it. A lot of the problems that come with autism was plaguing her. Like she couldn't keep a schedule. She couldn't stay on tax. You know, she she was just struggling. And that's not her fault. But she wasn't getting a grip on the things that she should have been getting a grip on. She was just letting it sort of like, I don't know, fly by the seat of its pants. And then being like, I'm so oppressed. I'm oppressed in this world. No, you are an autistic young lady and you should work on that. My goodness, some have speculated that Hale may have hated the Christian belief system at the school, which she formerly attended. But the judge also found the risk of inspiring copycats by releasing her manifesto was of grave concern. You know what? It actually seemed like, from all the pages that I read, because the Tennessee Star, they've been going to town with all of the leaks. They got like... uh, like 70 or 80 pages leaked to them. And they haven't published the pages, but they just they have wrote many, many stories about what they were given. And it really does seem, absolutely, it really does seem like it was the ideology that really twisted her and drove her actual hatred. You can have all the manifestos you want. All of them. All the manifestos. It won't, it doesn't make a difference. It's the ideology. The leftist ideology. It is racist. It is sexist. It is communist. And it will kill absolutely everyone and everything that doesn't fall in line. That's that's what it does. And Audrey Hale bought into that hook, line, and sinker. Hale used the writings of other perpetrators in similar crimes to guide how this plan was constructed and accomplished, mimicking some not only in their methodology, but also a choice of weapons and targets, Miles wrote. Hale even had past perpetrators out as heroes in their attacks, idolizing them. Yes, Columbine. She took inspiration from Columbine. But the Columbine stuff wasn't released. That's when the FBI started their uh, their policy of not releasing legacy items. 
suicide notes, videos, writings, manifestos, blah, 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 blah. That kind of stuff. That's, but that's when they like started to do that. Except the thing is, though, when it's a right wing person, if Audrey Hale really was mega, all of that stuff would have been out because the FBI is a left wing organization. So they would have been like, oh, yeah, all of this stuff. It's important to know, don't you know? But because Audrey Hale was a left wing lunatic who was tied in knots because of the ideology that drove her. They're like, no, no, we have to follow through with our legacy policy. Any legacy items that, that you know, that, that's left, we have to keep it locked up because we don't want copycats. No, it's your, your ideology makes the thing. It makes the killers. There's going to be copycats because that ideology exists. That's the driving force. Doesn't matter, though. They don't care. So anyways. Columbine is what inspired her. The last year and a half without Cindy has been difficult, but today brings a measure of relief in our family. Denying the shooter some of the notoriety she sought by releasing her vile, unfiltered thoughts on the world is a result everyone should be thankful for. The family of Cindy Peek, the 61-year-old staffer killed by Hale in a statement. Is that the avenue that they're going down? We are denying her her 15 minutes, her notoriety. We are denying it. I mean, in a, if you squint your eyes and turn your head sideways and really squint hard, you can sort of see what they're saying. But sunlight is the best disinfectant, right? So we need to shine a light on it. Give her as much notoriety as possible, I think. Infamous. Infamy. This ideology makes encourages you to uh, delete children. It is bad. We don't do it. I think that should be the message. A records request for Hale's writings, which were collected during a police investigation, was previously denied, prompting several groups to sue. Along with news outlets, a gun rights group, a law enforcement nonprofit, and the uh, Tennessee State Senate, or sorry, State Senator Todd Gardenhair, also demanded the writings be released. So she was armed with two rifles and a handgun, killed nine year olds Evelyn Dykehouse, Haley Scruggs, and William Kinney. She also gunned down school staff for Cynthia Peake. Catherine Koontz and Mike Hill for being um, finished by the police. Miles' ruling is expected to be appealed. Critics said her finding is a blow to government transparency, and it most certainly is. To say that evidence collected by police can be copyrighted by the criminal or the surviving parent or spouse of the criminal does not bode well for the transparency of the police or the judicial system, says Deborah Fisher, executive director of Tennessee Coalition for Open Government. Yeah, that, it, it's bad news because now, I mean, everything can be copyrighted. Anytime any bad guy does anything, so family or victims or police can go, actually, no, that's copyright. I, I, I'd really love you to have it and all, but it's copyright. You can't do it. Well, we're going to have to get around that with uh, fair use and the other exceptions. Anyways, I love you all. Thank you so much for watching this video. Do follow me on Rumble. Rumble is the most important thing. That's going to be my big push. Rumble is the play. Subscribe to me there and uh, check out my live stream. Saturday night off the rails. That's, uh, that's what I do. I often have friends and guests and we cover news and joke and laugh. And uh, it's a great time. My birthday stream was so funny. Oh, my God. Barreled over in stitches. Anyways, thank, thank you again. I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Peace.